Let me now speak about the part of Epson Virtual Production LED Solutions, or in other words, bring the world into your studio. So these are the topics which I try to cover during my presentation, but let us not, let us not waste time on the overview. Uh, let us have a look into a video. So you have seen several showcases there, and uh, I hope uh, you got a little bit uh, impressed and also uh, got impression. And let me now move into uh, the topic of virtual production in more detail. And to make an explanation of uh, the technology and the topic of virtual production by itself. So virtual production, uh, what is it for? So uh, first of all, it's to uh, kind of replace green screens uh, in movie productions, as an example, so that you get an impression uh, of, of the surrounding in real time and uh, in, in real time rendering, which is needed therefore. And uh, the camera tracking is also an important part for that. So in uh, the topography, you can see that there is a video source a working station and then uh, we as a uh, we do provide the LED screen accordingly for and the camera do film like now uh, I got filmed in uh, in this presentation uh, film the whole scene including the background and uh, once the camera do move uh, the background need to move accordingly to let it appear realistically because otherwise it wouldn't appear realistically but so the keywords for that is the camera tracking and uh, the in, uh, done real time uh, signal and, and uh, content providing. So here you can see a little bit uh, more in detail how uh, virtual production uh, uh, works like, uh, but it should also give you uh, a kind of idea of the different layers and uh, w w that need to be played with. So uh, just imagine, so I'm in the foreground, uh, then there might be a midground and then a background within, uh, within the LED screen and uh, some elements uh, onto the stage as well as a midground. So uh, all those layers need to, uh, to perfectly be aligned uh, b by the camera movement to again appear uh, mainly realistic. Uh, that means that also the background would need to move together with the camera and this need to be done then in real time. And that is what you can see basically in this slide uh, and that the camera tracking kind of give the right input for the, uh, for the graphic machines uh, to do the rendering in life accordingly in the right position. So what are all the advantages uh, within uh, LED volumes for virtual production and uh, extended reality uh, depending on as well? So first of all is seeing the filming environment uh, by the actors on the stage, by the moderator on the stage. And uh, it's, it's, you can also imagine a TV studio uh, might be still using a green screen uh, for the weather forecast 
And uh, this is not anymore needed with, with such a uh, solution of an LED backdrop uh, in extended reality in that case, but also if we think bigger for virtual production. So I can see what might be on the left and right and uh, around me and even on the top and bottom of me uh, in, in the whole scene. So uh, I can really interact in time uh, more perfectly instead of uh, just having a look on the preview monitor. And uh, yeah, that is already the description uh, that I can directly uh, interact uh, with the content and the whole scene and uh, set transitions if we think about the movie industry uh, from uh, one place to the other so from Paris to Rome to New York is done within one click uh, so we don't need to travel there we can uh, immediately change uh, the background and be in another city and uh, that means, uh, yeah, the suitable uh, technology to replace uh, the green uh, screen where there are its specific challenges uh, to get the good results. They, you can good re uh, get good results, but the LED backdrop uh, might make it easier for you. And then if we, uh, for example, consider about an uh, LED ceiling, uh, we would have also reflection uh, on every reflective uh, surface uh, of myself. Then uh, I usually summarize it in what you see is what you get. So I think nothing else needs to be explained by that, uh, except that this last point is quite uh, important and interesting, that uh, you can get a, a big, uh, or the impression of a big world, of a big studio, just by a small local space. And this can be done by virtual production, but can be even better done, uh, give you the imagination or impression of a bigger stage uh, by extended reality. But this is, will be described a little bit uh, in detail later on. So what are the typical applications for that? So first of all, LED volume, or you might also say uh, virtual production. Uh, it's first of all uh, the, the purpose and it's uh, the reason for and where it makes sense to work with for live action, uh, action shooting uh, in front of an uh, LED wall instead of a green screen. I just uh, explained all those uh, before. So it means the movie industry, filmmaking, TV drama, uh, immersive advertisement and so on uh, can be done in such volume and it makes sense to do it, them in, in such volume. Then we do have the extended reality where you can kind of add to the stage where you're standing on, uh, where you can add the same content uh, outside, even that there is not an LED screen. But you will see a small example in one of the pictures uh, in, in the next slides. So those applications are interesting for corporate event, webinar, uh, product launch, keynote, uh, TV, and TV, TV studios uh, are already using that technology, as I said, to have a small stage which appear like a big studio. And one of those examples uh, is on the right-hand side, uh, where you can imagine, or where I would like to guide you, even that it was not designed for that. This is a picture of uh, ISE uh, this year, where you can see, uh, or imagine, sorry, that on the right and left side, where you can see the background, uh, by extended reality technology, you would be able to add even uh, more of the content and uh, add uh, content and, and later on a play out where it would appear that LED do continue on left and right hand side as well. So uh, LED volumes uh, as you can see on the left hand side for advertisement so uh, you see a car in there uh, you can uh, let the car kind of drive wherever you want uh, with the background accordingly. Uh, so those are uh, also by fact usually quite bigger than those for the XR applications. So next is that I really like to summarize this uh, application in LED on camera. 
So it's not indeed a new topic for us and not a new topic for the LED industry as uh, already LED backdrops have been existing in TV studios and uh, at several places also if you consider about events uh, with camera in front doing a, a later on movie of, uh, of a concert, whatever. Um, so that already have been applications with LED on camera but uh, the challenge for virtual production and extended reality is slightly higher than for those applications. So first of all, um, we have the in-camera visual effects and uh, that means the, the LED screen uh, need really to act uh, accordingly to, uh, yeah, to the intention. But uh, yeah, that's quite general, uh, uh, general explanation. Let me go uh, in, in the next slide after this in more detail. So here you, I just want to make an example of the quite complex setup of an uh, yeah, extended or virtual production uh, or uh, LED volume. So uh, you have, a, as I mentioned, a camera with the camera tracking. So it's uh, at the moment in front of me and uh, then you would need the uh, connection uh, and you see this uh, guided by the GenLock to the control servers to the uh, live render machines and those give the play out then finally also GenLocked for sure as we need to keep the whole chain uh, to the LED processor then which give on our apps and LED screen uh, the picture and then on the preview for the director for example he can see the, uh, the composition of uh, of the whole scene and uh, also as I mentioned in between the actor can already get an idea by interacting with the, with the background. So what are the three main purposes for um, virtual production or for the LED volume? So first of all, uh, it's, uh, or not first of all, one point is lighting. So if you consider about LED ceiling, uh, you can use this LED ceiling for lighting up the whole scene as well, uh, but as well you can use it for the reflection. Uh, where then we come to the background, I think that is the most important part. Uh, that is why I revised to speak about, first of all, uh, so the background do have the, the content uh, on uh, wh where the, the actor or the moderator need to interact with. Uh, and then it's the interaction again uh, where the LED display is used uh, yeah, as a display and as a feedback immediately uh, and, and, and direct feedback for the moderator and actor. So uh, not any uh, LED screen is really suitable for that. So as I mentioned before, uh, we are familiar with the LED on camera uh, uh, yeah, topic, uh, but we do have special demands here. And I would now like to come to those. Uh, but first of all, I would like to explain to you uh, the products uh, which are suitable for that in our product range. So uh, for the backdrop, uh, we are prepared and suggest uh, to use uh, our uh, Aries series, our AX, with a 1.5 or 1.2 millimeter pixel pitch. But you can also use our Polar series with a 500, 500 millimeter dimension in a 1.9 and 2.5 millimeter pixel pitch. And then uh, you see coming soon, and uh, if you already joined the event uh, from the beginning, I've already spoken about our new uh, pixel reality uh, series, which is the PR, which will come up in a 1.5 and 2.5. And then uh, it guides me automatically to the LED ceiling, which I described. It's uh, then for the new platform uh, available in a 5.2 millimeter pixel pitch. And uh, we still also uh, do have in our portfolio with the Brompton processing and so on, our JP 4.68, uh, which is our lightweight uh, product for the ceiling, uh, but can also be used for reflector and uh, surrounding everything which may give you reflection uh, or where reflection might be needed as well. And then we do have our uh, LED floor with a 4.8 millimeter pixel pitch with a matte surface and we will come up uh, with a 2.5 millimeter uh, quite soon as well. 
So our Pixel Reality PR series is born for the virtual production and this describe it perfectly. So it's really born for that and designed for that. So it's a brand new design platform uh, which you now are uh, the, the, the audience which know about and which had been uh, first to hear about. So uh, as I said, uh, the, the applications uh, by itself need a specific technical uh, or do have a specific technical demand uh, which we uh, followed by this new product series. So first of all, and uh, don't get me wrong, it's not just by this new product series, uh, all the suggestions I made before with the, our so-called VP uh, versions of the products, uh, we have those uh, technical improvements already in. So it means high contrast ratio and anti-reflection treatment of the surface, because this is an important point for virtual production uh, that LED screen doesn't reflect to the camera. Then it's the color gamut. So we covered uh, 97 to 100 percent of DCI P3 color gamut and uh, a, a quite big uh, range of BT 2020 were needed as well as you can see uh, in uh, or as it is needed and as you can see in the color triangle that uh, BT 2020 is kind of the biggest range uh, and, and definitely uh, not at the moment available to catch 100% by existing technology. Then uh, again, if you followed uh, the presentation uh, by the beginning of today, uh, I've already spoken about uh, our uh, improvement we are working on in the algorithm to improve HDR uh, in its way it exists at the moment. Uh, so to get the benefits of uh, or to, s to improve the quality of dark uh, picture areas as well for the bright picture areas. Then we offer for the new product range as well as it for the existing ones uh, variable uh, curve design um, and we do offer uh, yeah, up to 7.5 uh, degree uh, or 10 degree depending on the product. Uh, but here one hint for you, so the bigger the curve, uh, the more the risk of different, uh, of different color reproduction due to viewing angle that need to be uh, handled carefully, but this is a fact by technology, uh, so just a hint for you. Then uh, to reduce flicker uh, in the camera, we would need uh, 7680 hertz, for example. Uh, so a high uh, refreshing of the LED screen uh, to avoid uh, that, for example, we would get uh, dark lines like on the right side seen. Then the higher brightness uh, within the uh, wide viewing angle. Uh, this is kind of uh, yeah the combination I've already spoken about and uh, which some of you already know from from me being mentioned several times. Um, so the high brightness uh, to achieve HDR finally. Then the high frame rate. Uh, don't get it wrong. I don't speak about refresh rate. It's the high frame rate which need to be achieved. So we speak about uh, the input part of the LED, uh, where then uh, we need to offer 250 hertz as well. Or uh, or where does it come from? Uh, it's that you need to imagine, or for those which not yet worked in the virtual production and XR environment, uh, you might need uh, to have one, uh, more than one signal on the LED screen. Uh, there are benefits uh, if you change uh, the, the, the shutter angle of the camera that you capture different kind of uh, background uh, at the same time where the actor is uh, in the same scene still. So, uh, th and therefore uh, you need such high frame rate, but as well you need uh, the high refresh rate for that as well. And what we took care with our PR series 
is uh, that the frame is uh, yeah, adapted to that application. So it's not purely rental, uh, but it's also designed, designed for uh, fast and easy setup and dismantle, uh, but let's say with a, with a lower frequent than for rental products. And therefore, we have been able to change the mechanics and to make it uh, most suitable for virtual production as an example. What we also took care is uh, that we have a better heat dissipation. Uh, and uh, as you can see, as an example for such volume, you have a kind of closed uh, environment, a closed room, and you would, would ne really need to take care about the heat dissipation in such kind of application. And uh, we uh, considering about that or considered about that. And accordingly, our new product series uh, is designed uh, or respect that in the design as well. So let me sum up uh, this shortly again. So uh, I mentioned the AX Pro series. So as you see by the VP, uh, it's, uh, it's ready for virtual production. As you can see, for example, by the refresh rate with 7,680 hertz, uh, or you can see by the high, uh, by the high brightness and uh, yeah, give, give you uh, uh, again the indication. So the top one, the AX 1.2 in this, uh, in this uh, column, you see uh, it do have 1,500 nit. For those which are already familiar with LED, 1.2 millimeter with 1.5 thousand nit is, is not a standard. So we achieve that, as you can see by the LED type, with cam and catted and flip chip technology. And there I come to uh, the technical terms. Uh, so as you might also seen, we use an IMD for the AX series. It's the four in one. Uh, it gives us the, uh, the advantage that we have a slightly, uh, or we have a bigger device than if we would use a, a 1010 SMD, uh, which make it uh, again by the bigger size of device more stable. And uh, we can also even do it, uh, uh, have a slimmer package. And uh, those are all the advantages, including, and if you, are, uh, if you would have the opportunity to see, I usually carry it with me, uh, to see the black performance of an IMD in comparison to an SMD, there is a huge uh, improvement. So the IMD also brings the ultra black perf surface with it. The flip chip technology is uh, the one I already mentioned and I like to mention is uh, saving uh, the energy and uh, getting down with the, uh, the power consumption. And uh, it also do have its advantage due to less wire bonding to be more stable and uh, less wire bonding, there's no wire bonding, uh, more stable and also a better heat dissipation as you might uh, be able to imagine. The AX series or area series is designed in a uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio panel, so by uh, uh, 27.5 inch diagonal, so that you can get native uh, HD resolutions and 4K resolutions uh, without uh, too much or uh, not enough pixel in the width and height of a screen. And the Cam and Catted, uh, I also uh, already mentioned that this is a tool and a technology to go down with the uh, power consumption and at the same time, the same than the flip chip technology to get higher uh, brightness for, for the chip. So this end up in, a, uh, in the explanation uh, and, and, uh, that I mentioned, the AX 1.2 uh, Pro do have 1,500 nit. Then we do have our mature PL series uh, in a VP version with 1.9 millimeter and 2.5 millimeter pixel pitch, as you see, uh, also with 7,680 hertz refresh rate, and all of them uh, with a, uh, as low scan rate as possible, as uh, the scan rate can't be driven down uh, in, in however you uh, would wish like uh, because there is a limitation for the technology and also a limitation if you uh, like us take care about the heat dissipation at the same time for example. 
So this is kind of summary. So uh, it's a perfect in-camera performance uh, with the white color gamut uh, and the high brightness and so on. It's ca uh, HDR capable, uh, fast and flexible uh, installation and also curved installation with all the features needed for VP. Then we have also, last but not least, the uh, MR as, uh, and the MAS, uh, called MAS series, uh, for the LED floor. As I said, uh, already existing, the 4.8 uh, millimeter, which uh, in most cases is uh, good enough, but we will come up with a 2.5 as well. Uh, all, uh, by the way, uh, the products which I mentioned and I not yet uh, mentioned uh, till now, uh, but with a control system uh, of Brompton, uh, which had been moving forward as one of the first, uh, inclu uh, getting in all the functions necessary for virtual production. So as I mentioned uh, already at the beginning, uh, the, the reflection of the LED surface is definitely that what uh, isn't allowed kind of in virtual production. So therefore our LED floor, the MR series, do have a deep black and non-reflective surface uh, as well. And uh, as, a, for, as a, is used for an LED floor, it also is uh, water resistance. And uh, for sure, it also need to have a high load capacity. Uh, we achieve that, including a safety factor, uh, so that you are ready to, uh, to make an LED floor. And as it is quite slim, uh, the, the, uh, the ramp uh, is quite small and uh, the slope uh, is quite small uh, for the ramp. Uh, so this is why we took care to make it uh, as slim as possible. And uh, what we also add is a, uh, is a subframe for our product, so which goes up to one meter by one meter frame uh, to get installed in advance on a an, uh, an floor and then you put on our MR series. Then for the ceiling, uh, we do have the JP series, uh, but don't forget it's not mentioned here that uh, for the ceiling we will come up with our PR series 5.2 as well. Uh, but here is mentioned the already existing JP 4.68, which is a lightweight product. It comes with a 1.8 uh, scan rate, uh, also with Brompton. So suitable for virtual production ceiling and, and as, a, as I mentioned also in between for reflections wherever needed. So you see uh, the JP, even that it at the beginning was designed for uh, for, to be a mesh product, to have a solid surface, so, uh, and brings quite high brightness, so that it should, you should be satisfied by this solution. I would be able to speak more, much more about uh, our new product and uh, about virtual production topic, uh, but now time is gone for this topic. And uh, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask us to contact our local sales team and for the moment I thank you but please stay tuned.